Welcome, thank you for being here with me today. My name is Carla Kelly. I'm an eighth grade teacher at Plaza Park. Uh, today I'm gonna to be presenting your ELA and we've got a little bit of social studies thrown in, lesson for seventh and eighth grade. Uh, we're gonna be talking about analyzing interactions in a text and specifically we're gonna be looking at a time period in US history following the Civil War known as Reconstruction. Here you have an image this was kind of an idealized image of reconstruction of the South and what they were hoping to accomplish, right? Every resource, all the content we're using today, the videos, the text, it's from Discovery Education, so it's in your social studies tech book. We're also using an interaction tracker tool from Smekins Education today. So we're looking specifically to analyze the influence of events, individuals, and ideas in the creation of various reconstruction plans, right? So we'll launch right in. I'm gonna break it down a little bit first. When we talk about interaction, that can mean a number of things. We can be talking about influence, um, some sort of relationship. It could be compare, contrast. It could be cause and effect. So as we go through this, we'll be looking to see what kind of interactions or relationships are occurring between individuals and events or individuals and ideas. So specifically with reconstruction plans, we're gonna think about the goals of reconstruction, how each plan attempted to achieve that goal or goals, and how and why they differed, all right? So looking at those ideas impacting those individuals or events impacting individuals. Just a quick fast fact as we get into this, um, this time period in history so that there's not so much confusion. Um, Republicans of the time period, that was Lincoln's party, and they supported more of a federal government deal, whereas Democrats, which were the southern states, had more of a state's rights value. Uh, and that's kind of shifted over time a little bit, so it gets a little fuzzy sometimes. So I just wanted to give you that information that that's shifted. We're gonna watch a quick video from Discovery Education to kind of give some background on the Civil War and then where things were and as we led into Reconstruction, what it looked like. So you can get a sense for the tension in the country and she will, um, one, of the, one of the presenters in the video will give some clues as to the goals that they were reaching for. So we're gonna go to Discovery Ed here. I guess I have to hit play before I can make it big. The future is uncertain and yet in various parts of the country, people talk about their expectations. You had two goals, reuniting the country, but also emancipation and freedom. What did that freedom mean? Nobody knew what that meant. Not the ex-slaves or the freed people, not the politicians of the North, and not the Northern people. We do know this. We do know that the vast majority of white people in the 19th century were not ready for endowing black people with equal rights or giving them the full rights of citizenship. That would be a hard battle to win. It's very frightening and it's not as if free people don't know what they want. They know exactly what it is they want. They want literacy and they want land and there had been promises. In fact, some representatives had spoken to Lincoln and Lincoln had said, well, what do your people want? And they said, we want 40 acres and a mule. We want the land, the land that we have worked legitimately that should be ours, or at least some portion should be ours. And we would like a free labor system as is set up in the North. A logical thing would be to take property from the old planter class and redistribute wealth to the new freedmen, and maybe even to some of the plain folk in the South, the white people. But that flies in the face of everything that is capitalist. <laughs> if property is not safe in South Carolina, then is it secure in Boston? And the answer, of course, is no. Even before Lee surrenders to Grant at Appomattox, Congress establishes a Freedmen's Bureau. Well, the Freedmen's Bureau had fewer than 1,000 agents to serve the entire former Confederacy. You can just sort of map them out and figure that that's inadequate number of people to meet the needs of former slaves, let alone the millions of, of white Southerners. And so the U.S. Army in the South ended up performing a whole host of other functions, bolstering the Freedmen's Bureau, as well as local military authority during the period of so-called military reconstruction in the South. Just how extensive is this military presence during reconstruction? 
It's not as though there was a huge military presence in the South. Symbolically, of course, it was enormously important because having federal troops in the South demonstrated the continuing resolve, tentative as it may have been, but still the continuing resolve of the federal government to impose order on the South. Provisional plans for reuniting the country begin to take shape long before the guns are silenced. I think Lincoln really believed that he could bring about a very peaceful reconstruction that would not only reconstruct the South, but would also restore or replenish the Republican Party and maybe even hold on to power in the most unlikely of places, the defeated South. So Lincoln's plan for reconstruction was rather gentle. As soon as 10% of those people who were eligible to vote in 1860 had taken an oath of allegiance to the United States, the states could rewrite their constitutions, write slavery out, affirm the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery, and rejoin the Union. Many of those Republicans disagreed with Lincoln's lenient policy during the war, hated it, were ready to punish the South, did not want to let the South back in without making them pay a price. And that price would be not only emancipation, but perhaps black suffrage, civil rights, and other disabilities that they were wanting to impose on the South. There were, of course, not that many Northerners who were willing to adopt that position because it had enormous implications and challenges for the federal government. But within those two poles, between get the Union back as quickly as possible and let's create a new Jerusalem in the South, there was a wide range of opinions. All right, so the video kind of shows how... Um, ooh, this may be problematic. I'm going to go to the computer to do that real quick. The video shows how complicated it was at the time, right? All of these different ideas that were, uh, you know, looking to be implemented and, and ways of approaching those, but also the tension. So you got to see some of those political cartoons, some of the images or paintings from the time period, and it was a very difficult and deep information, right? So, um, and deep feeling. So I heard one of the... Um, people in the video mentioned two goals. I'm going to pull up my notes here. I'm going to write down those goals really quickly before um, I give you time to read this. So one of the first things that was stated was a goal of reuniting the country. And from the video you get the sense of how difficult that was going to be with the deep division. And then another goal was regarding emancipation and what it really looked like to abolish slavery. All right, so I'm going to give you a couple minutes to read this first plan here. This is Lincoln's plan. And you did hear, hopefully, in the video that it wasn't a huge hit. But I'm going to let you read through it, and then we'll start marking, looking for those goals, how he intended to approach them, uh, and um, kind of the different aspects of other people and ideas that were influencing them. All right, as I'm reading, I'm noticing some pieces of Lincoln's plan. So I'm gonna start marking those pieces. Uh, so first of all, I see that in his plan, he had amnesty for Confederate soldiers, okay. which is like forgiveness for them. He had a plan for readmission to the Union for the Southern states, all right? And the plan was the 10% plan. The reason that it was called the 10% plan was because it meant if 10% of its voters said they would be loyal to the Union and agreed to end slavery, the state could be readmitted to the Union. So you can tell that this is pretty lenient. 
his primary goal being, sorry, I'm kind of mini semi-cursive and semi-print, the primary goal being to get them back together. But ending slavery was part of that goal and the loyalty oath, a part of that plan, was part of that plan there, all right? So those were kind of the four primary pieces. There was more to it, but that was, those were the basic ideas. So he was hoping, with this goal here, with this plan, to weaken the Confederacy by making it easier for them to come back to the Union, all right? And it was great for Union-occupied parts of the Confederacy. I don't want to say great, but it was put into action, and it didn't have very much support in other parts, so where the Union wasn't occupying parts of the Confederate South, all right? So what he did was to appoint military governors, and their job was to keep order, all right, as people were trying to return to normal life. There had been a lot of devastation. The South had been pretty much destroyed over the course of the war. And so in trying to get themselves back together, they had these military governors uh, in control at that time. Uh, and he actually had, as you can see here, some success with Louisiana, Arkansas, and Tennessee returning to the Union. All right. So with the 10% plan, three states were readmitted to the Union. All right. So a pretty lenient plan. Let's see what the next group or plan in place felt about Lincoln's, um, Lincoln's goals here. So this is Congressional Reconstruction, right? Congress's response to Lincoln. And I'm going to give you another few minutes to read this, and then we'll dive into some of those notes. All right, so we know that there's already division. Oops, <laughs> got to turn my annotation tool back on, you guys. Let's see here. All right, so we know that there was already, oh, I'm on the wrong slide still. I got way too excited. Swipe, swipe, swipe. There we go. I'm giving you all my secrets. Okay, let's try that again. We know there was already division, and his plan deepened that divide. So they already didn't agree with what Lincoln had set out in that 10% plan one way or another, and now it's worse, okay? So radical Republicans or the people on the extreme end of um, one side of Congress here opposed it. They said it was too easy on the former rebels. And we did hear in the video the, one of the presenters say that, that some Republicans were looking to punish. Um, the South for what they what they'd done right in seceding and what they'd done in treating people the way they had so it also said they didn't do enough to help people freed from slavery in Lincoln's plan right it talked about calling for an end to slavery but there wasn't the specific goal that they had in mind for it right so let's look at what the radical Republicans say is one of their you know or kind of their pieces of their plan so let's see they propose their own plan. They say, it's called Wade Davis, by the way. They say the states have to accept the end of slavery. They have to grant African American men the right to vote. Okay, so black suffrage comes into play here. It calls for more than half, right, of a state's voters to sign a loyalty oath. And not only do they have to sign an oath saying they'll be loyal to the union, they said, you have to swear that you have never supported a rebellion. Okay. This is a hard line that they drew because this would have disenfranchised or taken away the right to vote.
taken away the right to vote tens of thousands of Southerners for life. So they would not have had the right to vote in their, in their country because they had supported these rebellions, right? So that was kind of the hard line that the radical Republicans wanted to draw. Um, and so you can see, right, we had Lincoln's plan, which was the 10%. Well, the radical Republicans are saying, no, 50% or more and this. So we have these interactions between these ideas here and, and this opposition, okay? And you know that Congress doesn't like Lincoln's plan, or at least part of Congress. So keep that in mind as we move forward, all right? And let's see the reaction. So I'm going to give you some context. You can probably guess what happens next, but I'm going to give you some context next. Congress puts forward Wade Davis, and Lincoln vetoes it. All right. So in return, the radical Republicans tried to replace him in the 1864 election. They don't succeed in that. He gets reelected because his popularity um, was greatly increased because of his leadership during the Civil War. Uh, so he was reelected in 1864, and so there was still this, you know, kind of push and pull and negative, you know, feeling in Congress and between the executive and legislative branches. So they move forward, but then something else occurs, and most of you are aware that shortly after he was reelected and one week after the war ends, Lincoln was assassinated. All right. So what ends up happening is. Um, his vice president, Andrew Johnson, becomes the 17th president of the United States. It's important to know a few things about Johnson. First, that he was a Democrat, and Lincoln chose him to kind of help with the reuniting of the country. He had hoped that in choosing a Democratic candidate that that would pull in more states from the South to bring them back into the Union. So now you've kind of got an idea, right, of where things might be headed. So Johnson, now the president, proposes his own reconstruction plan. And at this point, we know that a few states are already back in the union based on Lincoln's 10% plan. Um, so Johnson comes in, and I'm going to let you read about what he comes up with, and then we'll make some notes about his plans, and then we'll see it all together. So one of Johnson's goals was to bring the Democratic Party back into power, or to at least, you know, give them some say back in the Congress, right? And at this point, some of them have been reelected into the Congress because they've returned to the Union, um, to the United States. So that's his primary goal. That's his party, all right? And here it says straight out that it's a lenient form. We inferred that Lincoln's plan was lenient, looking at a percentage. 10% is a small number. Uh, and then seeing the opposite view, where it needed to be 50% or more, shows us that they felt that was lenient. If we're hearing outright from the text, stated directly, this was lenient, then that tells us we can already infer how Congress is going to feel about it. And so Discovery Ed gets right to the point with that. So he didn't attempt to protect the rights of newly freed slaves, and he entirely pardoned former Confederates. There was no expectation in his plan for them to necessarily do, um, do anything to prove their loyalty. Um, he did have two additional pieces that weren't mentioned. One of those, so part three of his plan, was that the states had to pay their war debts. The southern states had to pay. And then part four was that they did have to abolish slavery, but there were no guidelines or rules or legislation from him about what that meant or what it looked like. All right. So there ended up being several things that happened, black codes, things like that, where even though slavery was abolished in name, black people were still being treated very much like slaves. So. 
Congress says, well, that's not going to work for us. They opposed his plan. And in the end, um, they, you know, we're still seeing conflict with them. In the end, we get a majority of radical Republicans elected to Congress. So they passed these harsher reconstruction policies, including placing the southern states under military rule. And um, Johnson continued to oppose them. But in the end, what ended up happening was that he got impeached. So um, ultimately, that's how Congress dealt with a situation where they felt um, that it just wasn't enough. He wasn't you know, ruling or leading in the way that they felt was, um, was best. So I'm summarizing here in my interaction tracker these ideas that we've talked about, knowing that the goals were to readmit and rebuild the South and to determine how to address emancipation, all right? So first and foremost, we know that the Civil War starts to come to an end, and Lincoln then calls for Reconstruction. So he knows that you know, we are literally a country torn apart at this point, and to bring the southern states who have seceded and said, no, we're our own country, to bring them back is, is going to be difficult. There's, there's got to be a plan in place. So he calls for this plan. He presents his plan, wanting to reunite the country, um, a very lenient plan where he's saying, 10% of your state says, yeah, we'll be loyal to the Union. Y'all can come back, all right? Radical Republicans in Congress oppose this plan, right? We know they felt it was too lenient, so they present their own. They present Wade Davis, and they say, not only do you have to ensure that you know, our, our newly freed slaves are safe, that they have the right to vote, um, you know, that we've got these 13th through 15th amendments starting to get uh, filtered through, we also have to say, you know, you've never supported a rebellion and you'll be loyal. It can't just be you'll be loyal and it can't just be 10%. Lincoln says, it's too harsh. He's worried that they're not going to be able to get the Union, the United States back together. All right, so he vetoes that bill. They try to replace him. He's assassinated in 1865 and then his vice president becomes the president. And then the 13th or 15th amendments, they're still kind of like filtering through during this time. Uh, so as you're noticing, I'm hoping, there's this kind of a cause and effect between events and ideas and individuals and what they're doing, right, this influence, and between individuals and individuals. So Johnson, who's sympathetic to Southerners, presents his Reconstruction plan. They impeach him and then take control of Reconstruction. At this point, some of the states have already been re-entered into the United States through Lincoln's plan. Right? So all of the goals of the radical Republican plan don't come totally to, to pass here, right, to, to play um, their initial goals, but they do get these things, right? So here was Lincoln's initial plan, and we learned that, you know, unfortunately that's not the one that, that comes to pass because of his death, right, his unfortunate death. Johnson's plan doesn't come to pass, right? But we do get these goals, right? The, the equal rights for African Americans, um, military oversight in the South, um, the votes, right? Black suffrage getting the vote, and then the 13th, 14th, and 15th amendments being added to the Constitution. So I have an extension for you. It's a challenge. We've applied this in social studies. So you've seen how it can look in a cause and effect fashion. That's not always how it is. We've talked also about how it can be compare and contrast, and we did a little bit of that with the plans today, too. You could also just have influence, right? Interactions that are influenced, some kind of relationship. So in something you're reading, maybe you've picked up a, a book from the library or um, via their OverDrive app, uh, anything like that on your Kindle, whatever, however you go about it. Um, maybe a book you're reading, maybe it's a TV show you're watching. You can even do it with something like that. Find an event or an idea and then track how it um, interacts with the character or you know, what kind of reaction you get from them. And then just track that throughout what you're reading or watching to see how events or ideas impact different individuals in the text. All right. So again, this um, interaction tracker is from Smekin's Education, but it's easy to recreate on your own. It's just a few boxes. right? Uh, and this may not be the way that you necessarily would want to track it. It might look different for you. Maybe it's not quite as chronological or in time order as this. Um, but it is one way that you can track those interactions. So thank you for joining me today to analyze interactions in the text, specifically about the reconstruction plans. Our code word today is robot.
Have a great day.